Hello students, welcome you to this session. We are studying set relations functions. So the basics are very important. So all the basic concepts, we have uploaded separate video. Hope you would have watched that. Those who not watched that one, in the description we have given the link. You can watch that one. Okay. So in this video, I am going to teach sums based on that. So exercise, they given a lot of questions, a lot of example sums also given. So some of the students, what they think, once I did all the exercise sums, example sums, I can leave it, I can do it very easily. So don't think like that. There are questions entirely different one. So example sums are much, much more important. Okay, so don't leave anything, go through all the exercise sums and example sums. In the first, ex in the first exercise, example sums you have to concentrate more. Okay, so a lot of concepts you'll get so that you study, then you can work out the exercise sums also. Okay, so first I'm going to teach some example sums. So I'm taking the first one. Find the number of subsets. See, number of subsets, what's the formula? 2 raised to n. But you have to be, read the question very carefully. There are different types of subsets, right? Trivial subset one is there, right? What are the trivial subset? The set itself and empty set are called trivial subsets, right? Then, you know, improper subset. Set itself is called improper subset. Other subsets are what? Proper subsets. In the theory part, we discussed everything. So here, number of subsets only. But we do this now, when you go for the examination, the question may be improper, okay? They can change. So read the question very carefully, okay? So find the number of subsets of A. So what you have to do, you count the number of elements in A. But A is not given directly. It is not given in roster form, right? It is given in set builder form. So you convert it into roster form, then you can find the cardinal number of A. Once you know the number of terms in A, number of elements in A, then you can apply the formula 2 raised to n. Okay, so, so here, a equal to set of all x such that x equal to 4n plus 1, x equal to 4n plus 1, and n belongs to natural number, and n lies between what? 2 and 5, both 2 and 5 are included. So n takes different values, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are the values of n. For every n, you can find the corresponding x value. So what are the x values? Can you tell me? When you put n equal to 2, you substitute here. When you put n equal to 2, 4 into 2, 8, 8 plus 1, it is 9. When you put 3, 4 threes are 12 plus 1, 13. When you put 4, 4 fours are 16 plus 1, 17. When you put 5, 5 fours are 20 plus 1, it is what? 21. So these are the values of x. So a equal to Set of all x, so write the elements, x values you write, 9, 13, 17, 21. So this is the set. It is given in set builder form, we change into roster forms. Then the question is, number of subsets of A, therefore, number of subsets of A. The formula you apply 2 raised to n. Here n is number of terms, it is what, 4, right? So 2 raised to 4. So your answer is what? 16. Now let's go for the next question. So it's a very simple one. You can use Venn diagram, you can use direct method also, but Venn diagram will be a little more easier, okay? So in 10th standard, you would have done a lot of questions like this. So once statement is given, a lot of information, first you write it separately, right, for us to understand easily. In a survey of 500 persons, total number of people, 500, okay? Sorry, 5,000, total number of people, 5,000 in a town. It was found that 45% of persons know A. So A, 45% percentage. percentage means, you know, it is out of 100, right? 25% percentage know B. 10% percentage know C, the language C. 5% know A and B. 5% percentage know A and B. A intersection B, right? So R, A and B. 5% know A and B. 4% know B and C. Then another 4% know what? A and C. 
A and C. And last one, three person know all the three. Three percentage know all the three. That is A, B and C. All the three. So what we do? We start with all, right? So all the three, it is three. So we write here in the middle, it is what? Three. Then A and C, four. A and C, four. So that is in this column, you have to get what? Four. But already three we are written. The balance is one, okay? Then B and C4, B and C4, so B and C, this portion. So you have to get 4, already 3 were written, so 1. Then A and B5, A and B, so this portion. This portion you had to get 5, already 3 were written, 2. Next C, inside C you have to write what? 10, inside C you have to write 10. Inside C means the C, the full circle. You have to get 10, but already what you written, 5. So the balance is what? 5, right? So B, in B, 25. In B, 25, already 2 plus 3, 5 plus 1, right? So 6 we are written. So 39, right? Sorry, in B, it is only 25, right? So 19. 25 minus 6, yes. In A, 45. A, 45. So already 6 is there. So balance is what? 39. Once you know this, then whatever you want, you can find out, okay? How many of them doesn't know any of this means? What do you do? Outside. The total is what, 100? So add all these numbers, then 100 minus. You will get the percentage. If they ask percentage, leave it. If they ask number, you multiply by totally how many people are there? There are 5,000 persons. So you multiply by 5,000. Here what they ask, last line you see, find the Number of, not percentage, so first you find percentage, then you find the number, okay? Find the number of persons who knows only language A. Only A, not only one language. Only one language means only A or only B, only C. All the three you have to add, 39, 19, 5. You have to add that. But here, only language A. So read the question very carefully, okay? So only A, percentage. Percentage of... Person no only A equal to 39 percentage. But they didn't ask the percentage, they asked to find the number. So therefore, number of person no only A, only language A equal to 39 percentage, 39 by 100 of what? Total strength is what? 5,000 into 5,000. So two zeros you cancel. 39 into 5, 195 and 10. Zero. Okay, so this is your answer. Hope you understood this. So let us go for the next question. But before doing the next question, I want to teach you some more. Suppose A is a subset of B. So you know, A is a subset of B. Say this is B and I'm taking A here. Now A is a subset of B. So among these two, which is smaller? A is smaller, right? A is a subset of B. A is inside B. Then what is A intersection B? What is common in both? A. What is A union B? You get B, right? So when you compare A and B, which is the larger one? B is the larger one. When you get union, you will get the larger one. When you take intersection, you will get the smaller one. So when it is a subset, A is a subset of B. So A is contained in what? B. So when you take intersection, you will get A. Okay, when you take union, you will get B. And... So when you take intersection, suppose I'm taking A intersection, B intersection, something, you won't get all the elements in A, right? It will be the narrow down, the set will be reduced, okay? So sometimes you may get A, definitely it will not be more than A. You won't get any element extra, more than A you won't get because A intersection, that means it is in A, also it is in some other set, it is in some other set, so some common element you are writing, okay? So what answer you get? It is either A or fewer elements than what? A. But elements in A only you are going to get, okay? Because A intersection something. So intersection is common element. But when you take union, when you take union, so when you take A intersection, B intersection, definitely your answer is what? Uh, you will be getting A or smaller than A only you will get, okay? But when you take a union something, union something. So A is minimum, right? So you keep on adding some more sets. So taking union, some more terms we are adding with that, okay? So you will be getting an enlarged one. 
So when you take union, you'll get an enlarged one. When you take intersection, it will narrow down, right? So with some idea I'm giving. So based on that, we go for the next sum. Okay, look at this. So can you read this? You would have never seen such a sums, right? Lengthy sums. Okay, listen, but you can do it very easily. So listen carefully. So we have to prove this, okay? So prove that. LHS, where is LHS? All these LHS. What answer you have to get? B dash intersection, C dash is the answer. Okay, now please listen. I'm taking it into two parts. First, I'm taking only this part. Just try to understand, okay? Just to explain it. Um, you take this, here what symbol you have? Intersection, okay? Intersection means you are going to take the common. Uh, left side you have one, here one set, here one set, right? In both the cases you can see A, here A, A intersection. A intersection, B dash intersection, zero, whatever it is. A intersection, that means your answer will be A or smaller than A only. Are you able to understand? Because A intersection, some set, intersection, some set, that is common to all this. It should be in A, also it should be something else. So either A or some elements you have to leave it and take remaining elements from A only. But the other one also A is there. But with that, A union, B dash union, C dash, you are adding some more. So minimum A is there, with that you are adding some more elements. So among these two, which is the subset? Second one is the, this is the subset of what? The first one. So A intersection, B dash intersection, C dash is the subset of what? A union, B dash union, C dash. Because here all union. So A plus some more. Here, not like that. A, some elements we are reducing, right? Because common element when you take, so it will be narrowing down. So this is a subset, okay? So when you take the intersection, you will get the smaller one. Okay, that's what I said earlier. When A is a subset of B, when A is a subset of B, A is a subset of B, when you take intersection, your answer is A. When you take union, your answer is B. When you take union, you will get the bigger one. When you take intersection, you will get the smaller one. Here we are taking intersection, right? So therefore... The first part, that is A union B dash union C dash. Intersection, A intersection B dash intersection C dash. When you take intersection, you are getting the smaller one. That is your answer is A intersection B dash intersection C dash. Okay, so this is the answer for first part. Okay, now let us go for the second part. So what is the second part you see? See, this is the second part. Now, here also, you can see something common there, right? C dash is common. C dash is common in both. But now, C in the second one, C dash intersection. C dash intersection. So, C dash intersection means either C dash or fewer elements from C dash, right? So, that is the smaller one. But in, the, in this case, C dash union. So, this is the bigger one. This is the bigger one. This is the smaller one. You are taking intersection, so your answer will be the smaller one. Okay, so what there also, which is the subset? So, since B dash intersection C dash is the subset of, is a subset of the other one. What is that? A union B union C dash. When you take the intersection of that two, that is A union B union C dash, intersection B dash intersection C dash, you will get the smaller one, which is the smaller one, B dash intersection C dash. So both you got it now, right? So now, both answers you got that one. Okay, so now let us see. First one answer, you know. For the first one's answer, you got it. Or first one's answer is what? A intersection, B dash intersection, C dash. And the second one's answer is what? B dash intersection, C dash. Now we have to take the union of that two. Right? We have to take the union of that two. So, therefore, so you can give some name for the question. I'm taking the question as, uh, say, I'm taking that equation number A. So I'm, t or you can write LHS. Okay? So LHS become, the far the first term, first term the answer is, a intersection, B dash intersection, C dash. Union. Second one's answer. Second one's answer is in equation 2. B dash, right? B dash intersection, 
C dash, B dash intersection, C dash. Now we take the union of these two. We have to take the union. Union means you write the bigger one, right? So among these two, you see which is bigger one. So second set is B dash intersection, C dash. Second set is B dash intersection, C dash. In the first also, B dash intersection, C dash is there. But one more term, A, but in between what you have? Intersection, when you take intersection, narrowing down, right? Number of elements are reduced. So among these two, B dash intersection, C dash is the bigger one, right? B dash intersection, C dash is the bigger one because in the other case, intersection is there, right? So smaller one, which is smaller one? A intersection, B dash intersection, C dash is the subset of what? B dash intersection, C dash. So when you take union, you will get the bigger one. So therefore, A intersection, B dash intersection, C dash, union, B dash intersection, C dash. Your answer is the bigger one. Which is the bigger one here? B dash intersection, C dash. How do you know it is bigger one? B dash intersection, C dash is in both. But in the first one, B dash intersection, C dash is there. If union something means we add some more number, but here intersection, definitely that set or some elements are eliminated. So only uh, reduced set only you'll get. Okay, so hope you understood this. So the don't see the number of sets, how long the question is, just try to understand the simple concepts. If you're thorough with that concepts, you can do any question of this type, okay? So I'll go, to, we'll teach the next question. Listen to this question. Here also you need some explanation, so listen very carefully. X equal to one, two, three, four, five, up to 10. X equal to, listen very carefully, then you can understand all these things x is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 10. There are 10 elements in x, right? x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. a is a set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, listen, something very important. Find the number of sets b. Find the number of sets b. You have to form b. You have to form B. How many Bs you can form? Some conditions are there. First condition, B is a subset of X. So B is a subset of X. You have to take elements from only from what? X. So X has, there are 10 elements, right? You can take elements from. And another condition is A minus B equal to only a single 10th set. A minus B equal to 4. A minus B is equal to 4. What's the meaning of A difference B? In A, but not in B. Listen, here only something important. In A, but not in B. In A, in A, which elements you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In A, it is. it should be in A, but not in B. If you find that, only that 4 is left out. Only that 4 is left out. In A, but not in B. That means other elements must be in B also. The elements which are in A, it must be in B also, except what? 4. 1, 2, 3, 5. Please listen. Now if I find A difference B. If I find A difference B, elements in A but not in B. What is your answer for? Right? If, it, if they ask you to write one set, it's okay. This is one answer. 1, 2, 3, 5. Okay. But they asked, how many sets can be formed like this? Satisfying two conditions. What are the two conditions? B is a subset of X, B is a subset of X, and A difference B, A is a fixed set, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A difference B, if you find, your answer must be only that 4. So, definitely this 1, 2, 3, 4 must come. In addition to that, other elements which are not in A can be included. Which elements are not in A? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These elements can be included. How many ways you can include? Some you can, you know, I already said sometimes you no need to include anything, that also correct. So that means you are including empty set, right? You can include one at a time, six alone, seven alone, eight alone, nine alone, ten alone, or two at a time, six and seven, you are including six and eight, or six and nine, six and ten, seven and eight, seven and nine, seven and ten, eight and nine, eight and ten, nine and ten then three at a time, then all the five, so many cases, four at a time. That means actually what is happening here, you know, subsets. 
any subset subset of this one any subset of this you can take union with this you can attach that any subset with this okay you will get b and all these b will satisfy the condition so how many ways you can include the term means the number of subsets formed in 6 7 8 9 10 so how many elements are there five elements so if there are five elements how many subsets can be formed two raised to five subsets can be formed right two raised to five subsets in the in that two raised to five subsets that is 32 subsets empty set is there if you attach empty set you will get the set itself okay one two three five then singleton set two element three element four element five every elements there okay so all the possible subsets you can will be included okay so what you have to write here so the possible b values are b union you can take any of the subset of any of the subset of what the set six seven eight nine ten so number of sets number of sets b equal to 2 raised to 5 so here how many elements are there five elements okay so 2 raised to 5 your answer is what 32 okay so writing work is a very simple thing but you try to understand the concept okay so let's go for the next question a and b are two sets a and b are two sets okay a and b are two sets so that n of b of a n of b minus a n of b minus a equal to two times n of a minus b equal to four times n of a intersection b n of a union b they given us what 14 okay so what i am going to some relation given right so for easy method i am going to take this n of a intersection b let n of a intersection b is equal to x so what happens is n of b minus a equal to 2 times n of a minus b equal to 4x, right? Because n of a intersection we have taken as x. So now you compare first and last n of b minus a equal to 4x. And 2 times n of a minus b, second and last, equal to 4x. Two table cancel. So what you're getting, n of a minus b is equal to 2x. Okay, so these values will just to go through, n of b minus a, n of a minus b, then n of a intersection b, we have taken as what? x. And n of a union b, the question they given, 14, right? Okay, now listen, uh, you know in a Venn diagram, suppose I want a union b, this is a, this is b. A union B means you know the full portion, right? So middle portion, you know what is that? A intersection B. What is this first portion? A intersection B bar. Or you can say A difference B. In A but not in B. The other part, other end is what? In B but not in A. B minus A. If you take the union of all these, you will get what? A, right? So N of A can be written as you add all these three. N of A minus B plus N of A intersection B plus n of b minus a substitute the values n of a it is given as what n of sorry n of a union b not n of a it is what n of a union b the full portion right the full portion only this full portion only we are writing the sum of these three so n of a union b is what 14 n of a minus b n of a minus b is what 2x plus n of a intersection b we are taken as x plus n of b minus a is what 4x so you are getting 14 is equal to 7x so you are getting x is equal to 14 by 7 it is 2 once you know x value all the values you know right okay now listen what they asked in the question find n of p of a number of elements in the power set of a so let us find a first so please listen in the same diagram a can be written a can be written as the union of a minus b and a intersection b if you take the union of these two you will get this right so n a can be written as or n of a can be written as 
n of a minus b plus n of a intersection b. So n of a is equal to n of a minus b. n of a minus b is what? 2x. Plus n of a intersection b, we are taken as what? x. So 2x plus x, it is what? 3x. That is 3 into x value 2. So n of a equal to 3, 2s are what? 6. That is number of elements in a. Number of elements in a equal to what? 6. But what they asked here? n of p of a, right? Number of elements in the power set of A. So N of P of A, N of P of A equal to number of elements in the power set or the number of subsets. Everything, the formula same. It is what? 2 raised to N. It is 2 raised to 6. So what is 2 raised to 6? It is 2 raised to 5 is 32. So it is what? 64 is your answer. Okay. Now let's go for the next question. <coughs> Listen this. Two sets have, I'm taking A and B. Two sets have... M elements and K elements. A very good question. So please listen carefully. So there are two sets. Number of elements are M and K. Total number of subsets. Okay, let us see. A has how many elements? This is number of elements. Okay. So subsets you can say. If there are M elements, how many subsets will be there? 2 raised to M, right? 2 raised to M. In the second case, there are K elements. So number of subsets will be what? 2 raised to K. Now listen, some relation they are giving. If the total number of subsets of the first set, total number of subsets of the first set means 2 raised to m. Total number of subsets of the first set is, so equal to 112 more, 112 more than what? That of the second set. Number of subsets of the second set, that is 2 raised to k. Hope you understood this equation. Okay, number of subsets, that is 2 raised to m and 2 raised to k. Number of subsets of the first one, that is 2 raised to m, is 112 more than that of the second set. So now from here, let you have to find what m and k. So see how we are going to do the calculation. Okay, so bring that 2 raised to k to the left side. 2 raised to m minus 2 raised to k equal to 112. M and K, you know which is the bigger one. M is greater, right? So I am going to take the 2 raised to K outside. 2 raised to K is not common. Still you can take 2 raised to K outside. See, suppose X square minus X. What is common? You take X is common, right? X minus 1. If X minus 1 is given, nothing is common, right? So if I am asking you take X outside, you can take what you write, you know. If the first if you take X outside, it is 1 minus. Here you write 1 by X. You multiply and see x into 1, x minus next x, x cancel, you'll get 1. So same way here, I'm taking 2 raised to k outside. So in the first one, 2 raised to k is not there. You get 2 raised to m by 2 raised to k. Multiply, 2 raised to k, 2 raised to k cancel, you'll get 2 raised to m, right? Minus 2 raised to k equal to 112 everywhere, 2 raised to k. So that 112 also, I'm going to write 2 raised to something. Let us see, is it possible? 2 table, if you divide, what do you get? 56. Again, 2 table. 28, again 2 table, 14, again 2 table, 7. So 2 raised to 4 into 7, right? 2 raised to 4 into 7. Okay, now please listen. So 2 raised to k into, you know, this part can be simplified. You know, there is a, a raised to m by a raised to n. What is a raised to m by a raised to n? a raised to m minus n. So you can write this as 2 raised to m minus k, right? Minus the second one is 1, right? Because we are taking 2 raised to k outside. When you take 2 raised to k outside, first one, 2 raised to m by 2 raised to k. Second one, 2 raised to k taken out, it becomes what? 1 only. So minus 1 equal to 2 raised to 4. The 7 can be written as, please listen, since we have a minus 1 here, I am going to write it as 8 minus 1. You can write like that, no? 7 can be written as what? 8 minus 1. Why? Because the left side is like that. So now listen, 2 raised to k into 2 raised to m minus k minus 1 is equal to 2 raised to 4 into 8 can be written as 2 cube minus 1. Now both the sides look almost of the same pattern, right? 2 raised to k, 2 raised to k, here 2 raised to 4. So instead of k, what do you have? 4. So you can say k equal to 4. Then inside the bracket, 2 raised to m minus k, right? 2 raised to 
m minus k minus 1 here 2 raised to 3 minus 1 so m minus k m minus k equal to 3 then minus 1 is there right already k value you know m minus 4 equal to 3 or m equal to 3 plus 4 it is what 7 okay so they asked to find the values of m and k therefore m equal to 7 and k equal to 4 okay little different type question so do it carefully now see the next question see just to draw the diagram n of a 10 so inside a totally it is 10 that is this full portion is what 10 n of a is 10 and a intersection b n of a intersection b is 3 n of a intersection b this portion it is 3 the full portion is 10 so this must be only 7 okay so what they asked to find please listen number of elements in a intersection b see what is a intersection b this portion is a intersection b but a intersection b dash that means a intersection b complement outside a intersection b outside a intersection b means leave this portion all the remaining portion right and after that what do you have intersection a intersection a so intersection a means it should be in a also so only this portion you will be getting right so a intersection b try to understand a intersection b means the portion what i written this three okay only this portion is a intersection b right a intersection b is this portion so this is a intersection b a intersection with the whole dash means leave that one take the entire portion and intersection a so it's outside but it is in a also that means only this portion you get okay so a intersection b the whole dash intersection a is same as only a minus b are you able to understand that one so you will be getting only that portion here okay so then you know number of elements in therefore number of elements in a intersection b the whole dash intersection a is equal to number of elements in a minus b that is 7 how you are getting total a it is 10 minus 7 it is sorry 10 minus 3 right 10 minus 3 so the answer is what 7 so for these type questions just to see the diagram and see which portion will come then you can do the sums very easily okay now let us go for the next question very simple question n of a union b into a intersection b into a delta b listen very simple concept we are using here n of n of a cross b n of a cross b can be written as n of a into n of b that's all here this is our a this is our b this is our c so n of a cross b cross c you can write it as n of a into n of b into n of c so you find the number of elements in each case okay so what is a union b what is a union b a and b you 1 2 3 4 5 6 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six elements a intersection b the common elements you take what are the common elements 3 4 right a delta b symmetric difference there is some easy method do you know that okay you know two formula the concept series that uh, video you would have watched so there are two formula one is a minus b union b minus a or you can use the formula a union b minus a intersection b right a union b minus a, a intersection so that will be easy here because already you got a union b and a intersection b so in a union b but not here the three four you leave it so one two five six I'll tell you another easy method here. Once you know A and B, if you want A delta B, symmetric difference means in A and B, strike out the common elements. What are the common elements? 3 is common in both. 4 is common in both. What is left out? 1, 2, 5, 6. Same thing you are getting here also, right? 1, 2, 5. That's some easy method, okay? But for the exam, you write the steps. Okay, now we write the question. What's the question? Therefore, N of A union B cross a intersection b cross a delta b can be written as n of a union b into n of a intersection b into n of a delta b substitute the values n of a union b count the number of elements n of a union b six elements 
here you have six elements here two elements here four elements right six two four six into two into four so your answer is what 48 now let's go for another question see the question n of p of p of p of empty set p stands for power set n stands for number of element number of elements in the power set of the power set of the power set of empty set so we start from this inner part so empty set listen very carefully easily you can do that empty set how many elements are there in the empty set zero element when you take the power set of empty set you will get two raised to zero what is two raised to zero one when you take one more power set two raised to the number of elements what's the number of elements now one so the answer is what two raised to one it is two if you take one more time the power set it is two raised to the number of elements two so two square is four if there is one more p then two raised to this four you have right okay but here not there so with that step you can stop right so your answer is what four so four is your answer so hope you understood all these things so if you know the concepts and if you are able to do work out this question then example sums are very easy in my next video i'll be teaching that exercise sums